Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Chris and Stacy with me. Hey y'all. Shalom. Got Direct Ibar with us too because we're going to be explaining his song. Mm. Why does he say his brother's traveling light speed? Well, in this, in his version, he's talking about humans. In your version, you're, we're talking about the guardian angels. Well, we're going to find out who's right. Maybe we're both right. Yeah. All right, y'all stay tuned. The Book of Daniel, chapter 12, and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, that great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. You guys have heard me say plenty of times how E equals MC squared means that we'll travel at light speed, that spirits travel at light speed. Right. Well, there's actually an individual, Direct Ibar, that put out a song on it. His brothers travel at light speed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought this was great because it's putting to music what I've been trying to say for years. Right. Right. And the inspiration from that song, I decided to go ahead and, and, and um, try to explain what I'm, what it is we're trying I've been trying to say. Mm -hmm. The way this works is you have the equation E equals MC squared. What does that mean, Chris? It means energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Yeah. Well, right here, what I want to show really quickly, if I can, is how this works to prove that angels travel at the speed of light and we will travel at the speed of light mm -hmm. when we shed these mortal bodies. Mm -hmm. Right. So just looking at this, the E equals energy, M equals your mass, and C is equal to your speed. So what this is saying is your energy is equal to your mass times your speed. And this makes sense if you think about, okay, you have a fat person that's running at full speed, runs into a wall. How much energy is he going to put into that wall and himself? Right. A lot. So the more the mass goes up and the more the speed goes up, the more energy Right. It's going on. That's why bullets have such a big impact. Right. They may have a little bit of mass, but they're traveling at a high rate of speed. So if you do the math on this, using your mathematical principles, you find that speed, or C, is equal to plus or minus E over M. And you have to take the square root of that. I realize, you know, you guys are quiet. You don't remember your algebra classes, but trust me. Okay. Yeah, this is right. Plus or minus because you have to take the square root of C and then you move everything to the other side of the equation, what you end up with is the speed of light is equal to plus or minus the energy over the mass. Okay. Or the, okay. And you take the square root of all of that. But the thing about it, since C is constant, the speed of light is constant, right. we can simplify this equation down to your speed is equal to your energy divided by your mass. Right. Well, the thing about it, it, when your mass goes to zero, just like any equation, when it, when the denominator goes to zero, the answer goes to infinity. Right. Right. But again, speed of light is limited to a certain rate. Right. Right. So it's not really infinity, but when your mass goes to zero, you can travel at the speed of light. Yeah. Right. And so what that does is it proves that angels travel at the speed of light because they don't have a mass because they don't have mass but they still have energy they still have energy sure but without mass that energy is virtually useless right you can't pick up something you can't move anything because you don't have kinetic energy which you would have to have mass to do that right but notice this plus or minus part in here it, plus or minus means they can go back in time so these spirit beings, we too will, once we shed these mortal bodies, will be able to transcend time, go back in history. You can go back and look at your own life. Now, you won't be able to do anything right. because you don't have a mass, but you can go back mm -hmm. or you can go forward. Mm -hmm. This is what the verses mean when it says that our brothers know a little bit about our future. You're going to hear that when we play the clip. Yeah. Right. So what he's telling us is that his brothers travel at light speed. So well, how does his brothers travel at light speed? And we're going to hear his voice here in a minute, his explanation. Mm -hmm. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. See, this is what the rock is talking about. When he say his brothers are traveling at light speed, these mm -hmm. are the brothers he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. This angel here. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let me show it to him again. This time we'll come to Malachi chapter 4, where he actually gives a name to this angel of the covenant we read over there in Exodus. Mm -hmm. Read verse 5. 
Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. All right. So that's another time we're hearing that we're supposed to be visited by these angelic figures. Right. But I'm not finished. Let's look at one more place. This is our number one brother talked about over here in Daniel chapter 12. My favorite verse one. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So we have three times that he's telling us that he's going to send these angelic figures. Right. Time is a third dimensional element. Time only came to existence when we became humans, and it only exists when we are humans. Right. Once we go away, like we've proved with the, the equation e equals mc squared, once we stop being human, and become spirit beings. Time doesn't matter anymore. Once we shed this mask, this yeah, body. Once your mask goes to zero. Mm -hmm. But let's jump over here and let's look at chapter two. I sent Elijah to return in the third era as I, as the master in the second era had announced saying, I say unto you, Elijah has come already and they knew him not. I shall return to the world, but truly I tell you, before me shall be Elijah. So there's consistency here. He's constantly telling us he's going to send us these angelic figures. Mm -hmm. Right? So the thing about it, you know, so they're here. Yeah. We're here at the, the Jacob's trouble is over. Yeah. You know, we are experiencing some things related to this transition, this spiritual shift, this mm -hmm. shift in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. You know, the knowledge is increasing at a rapid pace. Mm -hmm. You know, we almost can't keep up with it. You know, dreams and uh, intuition and we're hearing from our conscience, all kinds of things we were promised in the scripture is starting to take place, indicating that this Jacob's trouble has, in fact, come to an end. Right. So now the question becomes, how do we partake in this? Yeah. And so let, for that, let's jump over to the end of this chapter and let's look at a couple of verses there because you know these are our brothers who are traveling at light speed well, who cares if we can't take advantage of it if you would go ahead and read 42 Elijah a spirit of great power who has not been recognized by humanity has always been my forerunner today he has come once again to prepare the chosen those who have served me as a spokesman and to all humanity see not everybody is going to experience this Right. Right. Matter of fact, today is January the 14th. I promised you guys I was going to put out a video on January the 14th. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't understand a whole lot back then. But here we are today understanding that Jacob's trouble is over. But yet this that's going on is not going to be experienced by everyone. It's yeah. really just the chosen. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. In these early stages, it's the chosen who have served me as spokesmen. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But read verse 43. If you prepare yourselves and study my teachings in order to come to know my will, Elijah will come as your support and friend. So there are your brothers. Yeah. There's his brothers that he keeps talking about traveling at light speed. This, yeah. yeah. This, this Elijah is an angelic figure who will come as your brother. Right. Come as your friend. Mm -hmm. That's your Aki. He the, says Aki. The one you speak of as who transcends time. Elijah is a divine ray who illuminates and guides all beings and leads them to me. Love him and honor him as a forerunner and as your mediator. This Elijah is the forerunner, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right? And, it, and it's important to understand how it says there what we have to do if we want him to be our friend. You have to prepare ourselves, mm -hmm. which means um, being cleansed, maybe through baptism. Right. We have to study his teachings, which is the scripture. Yes. Right. And then we have to have charity for our brother. Right. So our brothers travel at light speed. Yeah, our guardian angels, our um, protectors. Yeah. Uh, Mediators. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I have a question. Okay, okay let's talk about um, a little about this last verse that I read. Which because one? I know 44, someone's going to say there's only one mediator, uh, and that is Christ. Mm -hmm. um, so now we are, I guess this text is saying that we have a mediator who is Elijah, who yeah. is our guardian angels. Yeah. So what, what would you say to those who are saying um, this can't be true because... T uh, the Bible says that we only that Christ is our only mediator. You have to be careful who you're listening to. Right. You know, but like he says in the song, don't trust your enemies. You have to understand that these people are the robbers of thy people. That's what, um, what does the word say? Um, Laodicea? 
Mm-hmm. In, in the book of Revelation, mm-hmm. the people of Laodicea, though that means robbers of your people when you look up the Greek. And so you have these people who are under the church doctrine, who are the robbers of the people coming in and spreading mistruths and misunderstandings. Right. So if they had to spend more time in the scripture, they would understand that the Messiah was the second Elijah. So now we're waiting for the third Elijah. Right. There are okay. three Elijahs, right? Mm-hmm. And so now we're waiting for the third Elijah. So are you saying that would be Moses, the Messiah, and now the spirit of Elijah? The spirit of Elijah. The difference is now the spirit of Elijah is coming inside of us. But you can't say the father is coming in. You know, Jesus is going to be living inside of you. Mm-hmm. No, you're going to have the spirit of Elijah or the spirit of, how do you pronounce it? Eliyah? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is the, so, you know, um, be careful, guys. Um if we're in this trivial time, play play is over. You know, you got to be careful who you're listening to. Not everybody has your best interests at heart. Right. You know, and people will steer you away from this Elijah spirit, especially those mm-hmm. modern day Pharisees who don't believe in anything spiritual. Right. The, mm-hmm. the Pharisees of the old, that was the problem mm-hmm. between the Pharisees and Sadducees, is that the Pharisees didn't believe that anything spiritual. Well, you have individuals like that now who are glad to stand up in front of your pulpit and teach you that there is nothing spiritual telling you that your only hope is what you will receive after you die and go into the spirit world. Yeah, and that's physically being raptured and everything material and everything physical. I think, you know, um, we've been led astray. And I think because of all the information that we have now, it seems as if it was done purposely. Yeah, the to, robbers of your people. To to lead us into thinking that every time you mention the word spiritual, other than the Holy Spirit, it's bad, it's spooky, and you better stay away from it. When actually, actually, is what we were supposed to be seeking after. Yeah, yeah. That's what he means by the bruise on the front line. The bruise on the front line. You have to remember that salvation comes of the Jews. Mm-hmm. We call them bruise or Hebrews, mm-hmm. right? Salvation mm-hmm. comes of these these certain people, and the robbers of thy people are trying to separate you from that. Mm-hmm. You know that's why they're doing stuff like you know shadow banning the truth channels or going as far as deleting videos because the robbers of thy people, the Laodiceans, are dead set on doing just that, removing the truth from you, keeping their. Um, agendas ahead of time, new world order kind of stuff in your face. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Hey brother, most high bless you. I'm actually uh in the booth right now. Just wanted to send you a, a quick little voice message. Um you know what's crazy is I said this in the previous message when the adversary starts attacking and deleting videos and such like that, trying to hide the content as proof that uh, you're doing the right thing. The Father's using what you're doing, brother. You know, um, if it wasn't for the things that uh, you brought out in your videos, for one, me and my family wouldn't be keeping the biblical Shabbat, and we also would not know the feast days. So, um, and also, I'm sharing that knowledge with others. So there are thousands of people that are getting off the Gregorian Sabbath through you and the vessels that you taught. Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that they're doing that. They've been shadow banning and uh, blocking certain videos of mine so that it doesn't reach my followers for the longest. And they do it on social media, too. Uh, you know, it was it was a it was hard at first when I noticed it, but I just kept pushing but yeah, that song Lightspeed, I actually have a story to tell about that song. That actual song Lightspeed, I have a story to song. And uh, this wasn't known to me. I, I, I just went in the booth and recorded the song. I wasn't thinking about anything prophetic. The song is really about uh, brothers and sisters going out and preaching the gospel really fast. You know what I'm saying? Like brothers on street corners teaching at light speed. You know, my Aki's move at light speed. But he realized that there was a dark saying in that particular uh, song. Now, in the song, I say a couple things. And I say tunnel vision. Um, And to me, tunnel vision means like, uh, you know, focusing. Like when you put uh, blinders on on a horse, they can only see forward. So tunnel vision is like focusing. But he looked up light speed in a tunnel and the miles per hour per second it goes and it actually equals a scripture in numbers where they numbered the tribes of judah to the to the t the tribe of judah i'm going
going to send you a picture of that uh, particular scripture. And the crazy thing is, when he told me that, he said, yeah, go to this scripture in the book of Numbers. And when I went to the scripture in the book of Numbers, I realized I had already written that scripture out in my apocrypha because I did a, a little small lesson on Hebrew numbers and how to prove that the Bible is translated from ancient Hebrew by the way that numbers are counted. So I already had that exact scripture in my apocrypha when he showed it to me. And we move at light speed. You can't hear what you can't see. My hockey's move at light speed. Long as I'm living, I'm a labor. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Put in the work. Tunnel vision never in reverse. My hockey's move at light speed. I move too fast to compete. I can do this in my sleep. Wake up and write down what I see. Hey, y'all. Coach in the fight here. want to talk to you about guardian angels. Yep, we've always heard about guardian angels. We, you know, they kind of put it in the cartoons like people have a guardian angel around. But they're not really covered in the scripture anywhere. You read in the, in the Old Testament or the New Testament or even the apocryphal books. And you don't hear a much. You don't hear anything about any guardian angels, you know, or you know, to any detail. You know, we kind of know that they're there, but they don't give us any information until... The Third Testament of the Bible. That's right, guys. We're going to come out of the Third Testament of the Bible for this one. We're coming all the way up here to chapter 41 and verse 10, where we're going to hear about guardian angels. All right. So let's pick right up. He says, you do not travel alone for my encouragement and my light go with each one of you. But if that seems little, I have placed with each human creature a spiritual being of light to watch over your steps, to make you foresee certain dangers, and to serve you as company in your solitude or as a staff on your journey. They are the beings you call guardian angels or protectors. Yep, guys, the Third Testament of the Bible explains these guardian angels. And what does it tell us about these guys? He says, first of all, he says that every human, every human being has them. He said each each one of you. So everybody has a guardian angel, um, not just the elect or the 144,000, but everybody on the planet has a guardian angel. Right? And then what he says here, he says uh, that he has placed them here. He's given us our guardian angel. Um, he says it's a spiritual being of light to watch over our steps to make us foresee certain dangers. Right. So when dangers are coming up on us, these guardian angels help help us to know these dangers to serve us as company in our solitude. So when we're by ourselves, we have a guardian angel there to be our company and a staff for our journey. These, these guardian angels are helping us with our journey. These are beings that we call protectors. Yep. Now, this is kind of what we've always heard. But here are the details in the scripture, guys. It's always good to have the scripture and the verses to point to so we can know exactly what we're talking about. But let's go on to verse 11. He says, Never behave ungratefully to them, nor be deaf to their inspirations, for your strength alone will not be sufficient to move ahead in all the trials of life. You need those who go ahead of you and who know, because I reveal it to them, something of your future. Talking about our guardian angels. First of all, he said, don't he said, don't be ungrateful. Don't 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 belittle those things that they're doing for us. We're going to find out that they're doing a lot for us. A lot of stuff that we don't even know is going on in, in behind the scenes. These guardian angels are helping us with that. But notice this part right here. He says, for your strength alone will not be sufficient to move ahead in all of the trials of life. Yeah, and guys, we're facing a tribulation here in 2019, 2020. We have a lot of trials that's coming up ahead of us. These guardian angels are going to play a very big role in what we do you know even the scripture says that most tribulous parts of the tribulation we're going to be able to see some of these angels some of these angels will be able we're going to be able to see their work and see their actions so he's saying you know don't take it for granted that these guys you know are here because we actually need them then notice this part right here 
He says, because I revealed to them something of your future. So our guardian angels know a little bit about our future. They know they know what's going to happen to us. So, you know, you go back in your past and, and you, you can you can imagine, you know, times when these guardian angels would have been protecting you or helping you. Maybe they were protecting you and helping you because they knew the missions that you have, you know, ahead of you. They know how important you're going to be in the future, you know, and, and such. And I can I can remember a lot of times these angels got me out of stuff. I didn't I didn't know they existed or know they were around I might have thought it was just luck or you know me being swift or whatever but they did they have protected us all of this time to get us to this point so that we can finish out our missions that we have before us look at verse 12 the struggle of those beings is very arduous until you achieve spirituality for you do very little to help them on their delicate mission all right now key word here guys is achieve spirituality see before we become spiritually minded meaning that before we become aware of the father and his creation and what he expects of us and put her, get our minds off of the material stuff and put it on to spiritual stuff before we become spiritually minded individuals we don't help the guardian angels at all we get in their way we make it hard for them and make it difficult for them we sitting there crying over cars and praying over this and praying over that you could imagine the guardian angel sitting there with his hand on his head just shaking his head going woe is me i gotta deal with this guy you know he don't even know what's important and that's what he's talking about until we become spiritual beings we don't help these guys at all they are helping us as much as they can well they are helping us with everything but we aren't supporting them at all we ain't doing anything to help them to help us you know at all you know you can, you can imagine we're like children you know the guardian angels you know are not really our parents but it's like children we are uh, we are completely unaware of what's going on while you have this figure above that's at that's actually helping us with our day-to-day -day stuff and we ain't got sense enough to be grateful for it look at verse 13 when your spirituality permits you to feel and prove the presence of your brothers and sisters who invisibly without any ostentation work for your welfare and your progress you will feel sorrow at having made them to work and suffer so much due to your sins yeah so once once you have progressed once you have um uh, being prepared once you are once you have climbed you know a few rungs of Jacob's ladder there then you start to become aware how much these guys have done for you then it kind of dawns on you makes you feel a little bit sad how much you've put these guys through because you gotta you, you gotta realize they're working really 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 hard you know in in, in this world to protect us from our own stupidity they're, they, which is what it boils down to us doing dumb stuff they are protecting us from ourselves they're protecting us from others too but you know we we're, we're one of the main ones that's, that's doing the dumb stuff it says yet when this comprehension arises in you it will have done so because the light shines in your understanding and from it will spring charity gratitude and understanding towards the guardian angels we you know we we, we start to appreciate what they're doing in our life when we reach a spiritual maturity as long as we are trapped in our materialism and our arrogance guys we're not going to even know that they're there we're definitely not going to help them but once we reach a certain level of maturity then you know we can start to take into account what they're doing for us and not be so hard on these guys the messiah made us free so we gonna tell the truth in the spirit bear witness you know that we them bruise keep a sword on me perilous times four horsemen mounting up i can tell it it's time no matter what they offer, I won't compromise. Why would I do that when I see all the signs? Put the Father first in whatever I do. Keep them serpents guessing, don't ever tell them your moves. Keep some oil in your lamp, it's time to show and prove. We study the prophets, not what's on the news. It's looking like the days of Noah again. Babylon, Egypt, Sodom, and Gomorrah again. They say the truth hurts, we gon' bring the pain in the Savior's name. Light speed, we leveled up, we couldn't stay the same. Bring it out. And we move at light speed. You can't hear what you can't see. My hockey's move at light speed. Long as I'm living, I'm a labor. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Put in the work. Tunnel vision never in reverse. My hockey's move at light speed. I move too fast to compete. I can do this in my sleep. Wake up and write down what I've seen. Light speed. 
said earlier, he, he's closer to us than our eyelashes. But yet we feel like he is way off in heaven and heaven is someplace far, far away from us. This is why he says it's because we're not preparing ourselves. We're not doing those things to prepare ourselves in order to to become closer to the spirit world. And what does it take? It takes adherence to the Bible, guys. I would start there in Exodus chapter 20 and read all the way to Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. And once we embrace what that's the covenant, that's the covenant that we're all expected to live to. And you read there in chapter 23 of Exodus, how it talks about an angel that will protect us through the tribulation. That's what he's talking about. When we when we have prepared ourselves and with the covenant, uh, uh, getting our life in line with the covenant and start to obey the covenant, then we're promised that our, our, our angel the covenant angel not necessarily the guardian angel because the guardian angel is there anyway but the covenant angel becomes closer to us and helps guide us through the tribulation all right y'all this is a lot about angels and guardian angels over here and what does it say this was again chapter 41 of the third testament of the bible i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up but you guys go ahead and check the channel uh leave your comment hit the like button and subscribe one of the things he says in here is how the father is right on time this is kind of talking about how he's gathering people in this time, how all of this stuff is moving at this particular time. Mm -hmm. This is right at the end of Daniel 12. Um, this blessing is what he's talking about when he says right on time in the song. In the song, he said they thought they buried us. Right. Because before that, he says the bruise on the front lines. Right. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the Hebrews on the front lines. Mm -hmm. These are, the, like I said, these are the people who are truly working to help humanity. Right. Not those who are trying to get rich off of it. And then he talks about they thought they buried us. Right. in the song mm -hmm. and what it, this is talking about how they disenfranchised us even supplanted us making us think that those other um Akhenaten whatever is over there are the real Jews mm -hmm. when they are actually Jewish right you know it's odd how they use the word Jewish when they're supposed to use Jew and the word Jew when they're supposed to use Jewish they, they're creating a lot of confusion to make us not know who we are right then he says that it rained on us Mm -hmm. Which me kind of points to water, like through the baptism of Christ, mm -hmm. how we get regathered through this water. He said, um, he says that we rose from the concrete. Now I'm not, I can't have a biblical reference for the rose out of the concrete part, mm -hmm. but to me it's like in the cities, because mm -hmm. you have to remember we want we're going to hear from Direct himself, and or, or we heard what he had, we hear what he has to say, and you know. Um, we can tell that he's giving this information supernaturally. It's not really something he's making up. He's not that smart. In fact, when you hear his words, it's clear that, you know, he doesn't have the same understanding that we can get from the scripture, right? I don't know if you should say Well, no, it actually lends to his credibility because his rhymes are not dependent on himself. And I'm sure he'll say that. Maybe, you know, maybe you have to think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But he, it, this, what he's coming up with is not on his own. Right. He's yeah. getting help. Yeah, right? I agree. Mm -hmm. now, he's not that smart. The angels are what's feeding him this. Mm -hmm. And you can tell it. Right? When he's talking about somebody riding, just rising up out of the concrete. That's deep. Um, he said, you knew that the sun was shine. He said he's got his sword with him. So he's got his, his he's got his Bible with him. Of course, uh, the Messiah sent the disciples out with swords. They actually had physical swords back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were told to carry them, never use them. Yeah, you know, remember when Peter um, cut off the guy's ears? So. Yeah, so they had swords, and mm -hmm. so now he's got his sword. It just looks different. Right. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say that Ecclesiasticus edifies him. Now that's important because the book of Ecclesiastes does edify anybody who would dare to read it. Right. So, you know, you guys check out that book called Ecclesiasticus. Not Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry if I said it wrong, but Ecclesiasticus. Is that the same book as Sirach? That is Sirach. Right. Right. Sounds like the rock, but it is Sirach. And then it says, um, don't trust your enemies. And like we said, those are the robbers of the people. You know, all of them people talking about rapture this and rapture that. You ain't got to keep the laws and you ain't got to keep that. These people are trying to distract you. And here they're just trying to distract us right here is midnight. Um, he talks about midnight, how we're getting close to midnight. And I had this slide up here because I went in to try to figure out exactly when midnight is. Okay. Turns out we're not at 1159. January 2022 is actually 1158. Mm. Yeah, so we got like 30. And we're going to put out a future class because I believe we're starting to understand where this um, half hour of silence comes from. I think it's right in here. This His songs seem like the type of songs where you would go in and you remember how you would dissect um, iPad Go? Yeah. His songs well, I plan on like, doing a lot of that, yeah. yeah. I could dissect almost every song he's got. And you guys mm -hmm. can check out, you know, the video that we put out, um, 144 minutes of, you know, truth music. Because this is actually truth music. People say, you know, I got gospel rap. No, this is not gospel rap. 
Mm -hmm. Ivar is not gospel rap. He's Bible rap. And it's different. People like Bizzle is a gospel rapper. And that's why you find his lyrics laced with church doctrine. Right. You know, and other mistruths in, in those gospel rappers, you, they're more churchy than they are Bible. They've gone to church more than they've read the Bible. Right. Well, this direct Ivar is the opposite. He's Bible, He's a Bible rapper and you can tell it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Bible lyricist, I would call him. But anyway, he talks about uh, midnight in there, and then he talks about the bombs coming down. Who's going to bomb first? Mm -hmm. You ever heard the saying, "Who um, when the bombs come down, we go up"? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. uh, yeah. I guess that's midnight. And then he says Hosea three and five. And I said I was going to look at this. Afterwards, shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God? And David, their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. So this is what we're talking about. Once we come in contact and learn to um, live with these new brothers that we're just now discovering, this is what it's talking about here. Mm -hmm. All right. And we move at light speed. Last of a dime breed. My hockey's move at light speed. We almost at the end, so we gon' get it in. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Put in the work. Tunnel vision never in reverse. My Aki's move at light speed. You can't stop what you don't see. I can do this in my sleep. Wake up and write down what I see. One time for the father, cause he right on time. One time for the bruise on the front line. They thought they buried us. Then it rained on us. Rose out of concrete. You knew that sun would shine. I got a sword on me. Perilous time. Still in Ecclesiastic, cause it keep me edified. Never trust your enemy, I know they telling lies You got blood on your hands, will he let it slide? Midnight is approaching, who gon' bomb first? Thumbing through these prophets till my palms hurt I ain't talking money, I'm talking no oracles Hosea 3 and 5, you know how the story go Yeah, and if you don't, then you ought to know When it souls back to back, I think I'm on the road Light speed, the Aki's with me and they all on go Scriptures open, they can tell you what you wanna know and we move at light speed, last of a dying breed, my hockey's move at light speed, long as I'm living, I'm a labor, tomorrow isn't guaranteed, put in the work, tunnel vision never in reverse, my hockey's move at light speed, you can't stop what you don't see, I can do this in my sleep, wake up and write down what I see. Back in the building, I'm with Bandit Loose. About to push the envelope, that's what they scared to do. Ain't no cap in these lyrics, you know I tell the truth. And the spirit bear witness, you know we the Jews. Keep that oil in your lap, it's time to show and prove. Keep them serpents guessing, never let them know your move. Yasharala on the rise and it's overdue. We just follow the Messiah, not what's on the news. I bow my head and say a prayer for the ones that still are but who am I to judge a lack of knowledge when that used to be me? And just because I'm it's real, that don't mean my spot is guaranteed. Faith without works is dead, so go hard, light speed. And we move at light speed, last of a dying breed. My hockey's move at light speed. Long as I'm living, I'm a labor. Tomorrow is not Put in the work, tunnel vision never in reverse. My Aki's move at light speed. You can't stop what you don't see. I can do this in my sleep. Wake up and write down what I see. 